My name is Edwin Bönk. I've been a restorer and collector of forte piano since 1981. I've been working with my colleagues here since decades. I'll introduce my colleagues to you in a film about restoration in a later stage. We restored many forte pianos, which gave us a clear insight that these beautiful instruments were mistakenly seen as less and inferior and sounding clunky. In my opinion, every period had its own fantastic instruments. It's absolutely not so that builders didn't know what they were doing. They knew very well. My goal in the following series of films is to show you how the history of the instrument follows the path of musical change and change in society. In most of the 18th century, music was being performed in small halls and salons. But roughly around 1800, uh, there was a well-established middle class coming up and they started making music in their homes and started attending concerts. As a consequence, the concert halls had to get bigger and as a consequence of that, the instruments had to become louder. Change of taste was another aspect. Music of Haydn and Mozart, for instance, was very articulated, uh, almost like speaking, as it were. But at the beginning of the Romantic period, uh, people wanted instruments more to sing and have a longer tone. And you can reach that by making the soundboard thicker. And if you have a thicker soundboard, you need uh, thicker strings. And if you have thicker strings, you need bigger hammers. This caused an enormous increase of, of tension in the instruments and the cases had to be reinforced and in the end even with iron reinforcements. Over the last 120 years pianos didn't change much. Everything which a modern piano has today was already there before 1900. Everybody knows the modern piano, but in this series of films I will tell you about the instruments that the famous composers worked with in their time. Pianist Rico Fukuda will play on them. The first episode is about a harpsichord, which is the predecessor of the piano. And in the even 16th century, 17th and 18th century, the harpsichord was the ideal keyboard instrument for playing the music of that time. Here we have a harpsichord, and harpsichords were the most important keyboard instruments of centuries, but every country had its own type of harpsichord, and, and the taste in every country was different. Uh, there were German harpsichords, Italian harpsichords, French harpsichords, uh, Flemish harpsichords, and English harpsichords. Now, how a harpsichord works is very different from a piano. A piano has a, either, every key has a little hammer which hits the strings and you can push the key slowly or softly and then you hear a soft sound or a loud sound depending on how you play. But in a harpsichord every key has, in this case, this is a single manual harpsichord, has two jacks uh, on each key and I'll show you what a jack is. So this is standing on the back of a key. And here you can see it's, it's just a, a small wooden plank and uh, it has a plectrum in it, a very tiny plectrum. The only thing you can do dynamically is uh, switch registers on and off. So this instrument has the two registers and here you hear one. And I can switch another one on and then you hear two. Which gives considerably more volume. And that's the only dynamics you can make on a harpsichord. 
This is a shooty harpsichord. It was made in London, 1744. Can you imagine? I mean, Bach was still alive and Handel was still alive and Handel was even in London and he was a great friend of Schutte's. And uh, so I like to think he might even have played this very harpsichord. That, that would be wonderful, but we don't know, of course. This is one of the earliest surviving Schutte's. This instrument came here in 1991 and I got it through a swap with the museum. And when it got popular to play historical instruments in the 1960s, uh, people started restoring them, museums started restoring them, but they didn't know anything about it. So um, they used wrong woods and wrong glues and modern screws and it's completely terrible. So a lot of instruments have been ruined, unfortunately. And in the 1980s, they started realizing that this was a that these were big mistakes, so uh, they decided they wanted something else. They wanted pure historical documents, and they started swapping instruments and uh, and selling instruments, and and that's the way I got it through a swap. The next stage of the history of the piano will be a harpsichord once more. Uh, it'll be a shooty harpsichord, 1775, with all kinds of beautiful. Uh, dynamic possibilities. You'll see it next time. Thank you.